on their starboard side. And that's our co-pilot, our backseat driver, Tomo Rogers. If you are located closer to Mr. Rogers, you can feel free to ask him your questions. The pilot, the co-pilot, and I are all on these headsets, so we're all in constant communication with each other. Any of your questions down there will be relayed from him up to me. I'll address them for everybody, all right? And do feel free to ask your questions, guys. Ask as many as you think of. You have a lot of knowledge on board. You got Travis up here and myself, both with our degrees in marine science. And you got Tomo down there in the back, who's been diving on this reef for 25 years. So you have a whole lot of love. Underwater Tomo. We've got you loud and clear as well. Events are secure. Positive points. He has been established with a cruise and over the reef. All right, so we're now free to explore. Our pilot is going to stay in constant communication. What can I answer for you? How deep is the water from here to the surface? So we're probably in about 75 feet of, from the very bottom to the surface. So we're sitting about 60 feet. There's probably still about 15 feet below us. So I'd say about 75 feet. We also know that because the coral reef is going here, the coral reef does thin out about 80 feet. So we can kind of gauge where we are from that. If our coral reef is thinning out, we'll probably be getting into that 80, 85 feet of, of water. But right now we're probably cruising about 75 feet. Now we have schools of fish already outside our viewports, guys. So both sides are getting this school of fish. It's kind of a cigar-shaped fish, silver in color with a forked yellow tail. Now that is an endemic species. That means it's found nowhere else in the world except Hawaii, and it's called the owama. Now the owama is a juvenile goatfish. I know it's a juvenile because it's in a big school like this. It prefers a school as a juvenile for protection. Once it becomes an adult, it will venture off. And then it's actually no longer called the Owama. It's called the Veke A'a, or the Veke. And the Veke was very sacred for the Hawaiians. The Veke produces a type of neurotoxin that's pretty hallucinogenic. So the Kapuna, or the leader of the spirit, would consume the Veke, have the vivid hallucinations, report back what they saw. So this was the Hawaiians' mind-opening ceremony fish. It was very, very sacred for them. Now we are making our way over our main body of natural coral reef, guys. The difference between a natural coral reef and an artificial reef is what the coral reef is growing on top of. So coral reef does need to attach itself to something hard in order to grow. It can't just grow out of nowhere. So all the coral reef that you're currently looking at is growing off of a rock. Do you guys want to take a guess at what type of rock? Yeah, we only have one type of rock here in Hawaii, so yes, lava rock. All of this is growing off of ancient lava flows from our nearby volcano, Hualalai. Hualalai erupted thousands of years ago, left behind these lava flows, the coral reef took it over. That makes it a natural coral reef system. Now we will see some examples of artificial reef throughout our dive today. Things like anchors and tires, the shipwrecks that we're going to see, any man. Now I do see our most famous fish on both sides of the submarine. You gotta look down into the reef for this fish, but it's a fully yellow fish about the size of your paw. You'll probably recognize it if you've seen any saltwater aquarium or if you've watched Finding Nemo. In Finding Nemo, he was bubbles, the fish at the doctor's office that was obsessed with the bubbles. So those guys are called yellow tang. Now yellow tang, are special because they are native to Hawaii. That means they were originally from Hawaii. That would make bubbles a Hawaiian fish. Now that bright yellow color was the color of the ali'i of the Hawaiians, so the royalty of the Hawaiians. If you weren't royalty, you could not have anything yellow colored. That includes yellow feathers, yellow flowers. You couldn't be catching a yellow fish. If you were caught catching a yellow fish, you would pay the price of the fish. Want to take a guess what that price was? Yeah, your life. You paid for that little yellow fish with your life. So we had a lot of yellow tang at one point, so much so that when our waves would break, sometimes it appeared to have a golden hue to them from the mass schools of yellow tang. Unfortunately, they are the world's most popular saltwater aquarium fish, so we do lose consistently about 500,000 of them per year to the aquarium trade. 
Well, the reason you're going to see so many today is because we are diving on a marine sanctuary. So there's no commercial fishing, no aquarium trade within this 25 acres of marine. Great views of our coral reef system, both sides of the submarine coral for as far as your eye can see. Now this is some of the healthiest coral reef in the entire world, especially as far as people are living. So there are some other reefs out there in remote locations doing better than ours. But as far as people are living, where there's a tourism industry, this is some of the healthiest reef, guys. If you've spent any time on the Big Island of Hawaii, you realize that name is pretty much no joke, right? The Big Island is in fact very, very big. Now this fringing reef system wraps around the entirety of the Big Island. It is a big so his insurance company called it negligence. He got nothing in the payout. Now again, folks, this is an artificial reef system, so a lot of algae, a lot of urchins, lots of fish thriving on this reef system. They use this same vessel, they would pull it up onto the beach, lower that forward gate, and then troops and vessels could come straight out. Now probably the most notable urchins that are on this artificial reef, the predator, are the big spiny ones, the big black pincushion looking ones, and those are called vana. Now you don't wanna step on the fauna. The fauna is venomous, guys. It will break off in your skin. It feels like you're having 10 bee stings happening at once. Oh, now you have to take those out manually. If you are taking them out and they break off in your skin because they are quite brittle, you are then tasked with dissolving the fauna. The best way to dissolve fauna is with vinegar. If you do not have vinegar available, you can discuss amongst yourselves the next best option, okay? Now our ancient Hawaiians, if they got vana stuck in their body, they would take the paddle from their canoe and they would smack that vana until it broke up in their skin to slowly come out. They were a bit tougher than the rest of us. Now, a bit of rubble on the sea floor there, port side. You might see a little bit of rubble that used to be the pilot's helm. It was once connected to the vessel. It got swept off in a fairly large swell. Now, you guys on port side are at that reef to spot the parrotfish. I see one down there. That's the very vividly colored one. Again, blue, yellow, looks like it's flapping its wings. And those are the males, by the way. The males are the colorful ones. The females are kind of gray in color. Now, there's typically one male for several females. However, the females are hiding the male to hide its females. Now, it's the male ship. defends it its females. They're like a little pack. They're a family. They stay all together. The same females, the same one male. Now, if that male loses its life, the most dominant female then becomes the male. So they are able to change genders. That goes from female to male. About 80% of our fish are able to do that, go from female to male. So they are able to change genders down here. So they'll stay in. They came in and pulled all those items down here. In about two weeks, they become artificial reef systems. It would do more damage for us to bring those items up and kill what's growing on top of it than to just let the damage that's been done be done and let nature take its course. Now the side the naked lady. Yeah. Kind of looks like a, a dolphin poop almost, a little bit, yeah. I think what you're talking about is our sea cucumbers. So you have a lot of sea cucumbers, they're like sea slugs, sea cucumbers. They kind of look, they have black ones and brown ones and striped ones. They kind of look like a, a dolphin's left behind. So they are sea cucumbers or sea slugs. And those guys are what we call detritivores. So they actually sift the sand and eat the particulates of dead carcasses that have left their ways in the sand. So they'll sift through that sand using their filter feeding abilities to get the pieces that they want. Now we're getting lined up here for you guys on the starboard side. 
There is a little statue of a lady at the forward of the vessel. That statue was brought down by scuba divers to commensurate the funny name, of course. They've got some moofish out there, starboard side. That's the silver one out there. It's called the Grand Eyed Emperor in English, or the moofish. That's actually one of our most delicious fish down here. Now, another endemic species on this artificial reef system is the one that kind of looks like an opened up Oreo cookie, white in the center, black around the rim. That's called the Hawaiian Dacillus. It's an endemic species and a territorial little fish. You get close to its house, it attacks you by pulling at your arm hair and pinching you. Now, there is a buckle in the middle of the vessel, guys. That buckle is where her propane tanks were located. That's where the explosion took place out the sides of her vessel. There is a big long line at the very back of this vessel here, guys. That big long line floats all the way to the surface. It's what we call a mooring, of course. Now, this is a really popular scuba diving spot, so we have a mooring installed. Instead of casting anchor and potentially carving this artificial reef system, there's a mooring installed, so they can just tie up to that mooring and then dive down. Now, most of our moorings here in Kona were actually donated to us, and they were donated by a man named Jerry Garcia. So Jerry Garcia, the lead singer of The Grateful Dead, was a really avid scuba diver. He loved scuba diving here in Kona. He noticed how much casting anchor harmed our coral reef. So he went and he told his band, and his band, The Grateful Dead, and him put on a bunch of benefit concerts. And they raised the money for our moorings here in Kona. So they were donated by The Grateful Dead, and most of them were even installed by Jerry Garcia himself. So our pilot is looking for a patch of soft sand, guys. He's going to attempt to nestle us down on the bottom of the sea floor. He's never done it before, so we'll see how this goes. Now our pilot's even... HF Radio, here we come. All right, guys, that was our clear to surface. So fasten your seatbelts, trace the upright lock position. Here we go. System. So we got six air ballast tanks. When they are filled, we can see the excess air blowing into the ocean. Let our pilot know that tank is full to shut it on down. Tie up their lines. So if you guys see feet dangling, you let us know. Now 